dealing with the stress and the anxiety that comes with an exam season is one of the most important factors that will determine whether you do well or not. People usually think that stress is a bad thing and it should be completely eliminated, but it's actually quite useful. Now, obviously, overwhelming anxiety that's so bad that you can't even sleep at night is quite harmful. But a bit of stress is actually really good for you. It's what motivates you to study just a bit more or sleep a bit earlier so that you have more energy to study the next day. That being said, I think I reached the point where I could say I found the right balance, but it wasn't easy, so here's exactly how I did it. Firstly, ask yourself why you're stressed. Stress is not random, there's gonna be reasons for it. Let me give you an example. Have you ever walked down the street and then noticed that the wall was a certain color or the pavement was a certain color and then that caused you stress? Of course it's never happened because it doesn't matter to you. You're just gonna walk on and you're gonna forget about the pavement or the wall the next day. So when you stress about something, there's gonna be reasons for it. Now the first reason could be that you think you're not good enough. I sometimes get thoughts in my mind Thoughts like, you're not smart enough or you haven't prepared enough. And the way I deal with them is actually quite simple. I just prove them wrong. When I come across a topic in math and I think it's a bit hard and it starts stressing me out, for example, I remind myself of my achievements in math. I remind myself that I did quite well in GCSEs and AS and that I'm predicted A star for a reason. Most of the time, these negative thoughts are not rooted in anything true. Now that usually makes them go away, but if it doesn't help, there's something else you can do. You can prepare so much for an exam that you can't even entertain the thought that you're not prepared enough. Imagine you've gone through all of the content and then made notes and made flashcards and then practiced pretty much all of the questions you can get your hand on. How can you then possibly tell yourself that you're not prepared enough or you're not good enough for the test? Now, maybe the stress you feel because of an exam is not rooted in incompetence, but it's rooted in just fearing a big event. Let me explain. Think of a professional footballer. If he's taking penalties in training against even a really good keeper, if you give him 10 penalties, he'll probably score all of them. But now take that same keeper and put him in the World Cup final. Tell him to take a penalty then and look how stressed he'll be. His conversion rate could go down from 100% to like 20%. In both cases, he's taking the same shots. But in one case, there's no stakes at all. The penalty doesn't matter. And in the second case, the whole world is watching. So the importance of an event can cause a lot of stress. Even if you've done the action you need to do in that event hundreds of times. Now, the important event in our case is the final exam. If a lot of the thoughts you're getting are, oh man, this exam is really big. I really need a good grade. What if I don't do too well? Then the most likely reason for you stressing is that you've overplayed how important the exam actually is. Now, the solution to this would be just to sit down and remind yourself that the importance of the exam should not affect your performance in it. Usually, it's not enough to just tell yourself that. You have to sit down, maybe write it out in your notes app or just on a piece of paper and drill it into your mind. It's quite ironic, isn't it? The more important something is, the less likely we are to do well in it because of stress. But that is just how we're built. Now, if that doesn't help, another thing you could do is just to sit down and visualize yourself doing well in the exam. I think I've only told one person that I do this, but before an exam, most cases at least, I sit down for like a couple of minutes and just visualize myself doing the exam and getting every single question correct. I sometimes even go a step further and visualize myself looking at the results certificate with my parents. Now listen, this could be bro science, but I'm telling you it works. When you visualize yourself in the future doing well and getting the grade back and being proud of yourself, you brainwash yourself into thinking you're already that person. And even if you're not that person, just because you have their mindsets, you're going to go into an exam thinking you've already aced it. Now think of what that could do to your stress. It would eliminate it. If you found the video beneficial so far, can you just do me a solid and hit the like button so other people can benefit as well? Now finally, don't make any sacrifices in your lifestyle when an exam season comes. Now I'm not talking about stuff like scrolling through TikTok and Instagram or watching Netflix. That stuff is not going to help you at all when it comes to getting all nines or all A stars. I'm talking about beneficial hobbies. When an exam season comes around the corner, like mocks or the actual exam season, I see way too many people skipping the gym and spending more time indoors because they don't want to go out with their friends. They want to study instead, for example. I'm not lying to you when I tell you that my lifestyle when I'm living normally and when I have an exam season coming up is exactly the same. As in, I still do the same hobbies. I still go to the gym. I do my jujitsu. I, I go on walks. I spend time with my friends and family. I don't sacrifice any of that. Think about it, on your deathbed, you're not gonna wish you got a nine instead of an eight or an A star instead of an A. You're gonna wish you spent more time with your friends and family and you're gonna wish you spent more time taking care of your health. So it would make sense not to sacrifice those things. Find beneficial hobbies that de-stress you and then hold on to them. Don't get caught up when your friends tell you that they stop going to the gym or they stop going out just to study a bit more. You know why they do that? Why they feel like they have to sacrifice those beneficial hobbies? It's because they procrastinated studying for so long. All of a sudden, now they feel like they have to study like 10 hours a day. And guess what? That's going to stress them out even more. So if you want to know how I study 30 minutes a day on average, watch this video right here.